I'm so happy to be back tonight. I'm not in New York City. I'm here in Costa Rica, where I come from, with my family, spending time with my nephews, my babies, my mom and dad, my brother, and everybody else. But tonight we have a very special guest, Laura Chinchilla, the Costa Rican president, first female president in our show. Of course, I'm very excited. Thank you so much for coming. This is a very special occasion for me. No, thank you for uh, your invitation and this opportunity to talk a little bit about our, our wonderful country. Mrs. Laura Chinchilla is the president. All of a sudden, you go to school, you go to college, and one day, you are a president. How do you feel about that? Life is very strange because, in fact, um, I never planned uh, to uh, become uh, president of my country. What I always loved was uh, to work with public sector, to serve my people. Uh, I invest a lot of my time, and uh, mostly my academic formation is in uh, public policy. So what I really loved uh, was uh, making public policy, working with the public sector, and um, well, I finally ended in this position. I feel very grateful with this country because uh, they gave me this wonderful opportunity. Why Costa Rica is well known as the Switzerland from Central America? Costa Rica is a very exceptional nation um, as compared with most of the Latin American countries, but also with other uh, big countries in the world. We have been able to develop our country in a very balanced way. At the same time that we have been very concerned about economic growth, we also have been able to have very uh, strong institutions. We are one of the oldest democracy in Latin America. We have understood that human development has to be at the core of our policies. And for example, uh, Costa Rica has rich health and educational uh, indicators uh, similar to the most developed nations in the world. The economic growing in the last uh, six months has been exceptional, but not only economic growth, but it's the macroeconomic stability. Uh, we are growing. We have one of the uh, lowest inflation rate of the last 40 years. We are generating employment. The only problem we still have is a fiscal deficit, but we are trying to be very cautious with how we expand the money in the public sector. There is something very special about our development, and that is that we have also invested in sustainable development. We understand that if we want to continue growing in the future, we have to preserve our most important uh, value, which is our nature. Now, let me ask you, when you watch the news, what's your concern? What, what, what triggers you? What's your biggest concern in terms of what's going on? Well, I, uh, of course, I uh, feel um, very concerned about the situation in other nations because you will like that nations, for example, like Spain, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, Greece, uh, Ireland, that uh, were growing at exceptional rates in the last years now are going through very, very critical situations. You would like to see uh, those nations uh, in, uh, with a better performance. Um, because you don't want uh, the people from those nations suffering in the way they are suffering. Right. But at the same time, also I have to say that Costa Rica grow is very much aligned with the uh, possibility of exporting uh, our products. So if those markets, if those big markets do not react uh, probably in the following uh, two years, uh, probably uh, their situation is going to impact us uh, in a very negative way because uh, we are still depending to sell our products. What has been your biggest obstacle? I would say that probably the obstacles are not uh, materials, but uh, very subjective uh, obstacles. I don't know what is happening in my country, but uh, there are some people that every day are telling to the Costa Ricans that everything here Every, everything here is bad. Right. Uh, and as uh, we have been talking, we are uh, growing in economic terms. We have been able to control one of the most concerning problems in the Central American region, which is the problem of uh, security. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still uh, doing well in terms of social indicators. Of course, we have some institutional problems, but they're a kind of uh, environment, a kind of um, 
situation that have been created in which some Costa Rican thinks that the situation is not good. When the nation and their people uh, do not feel good in subject to terms, it is even more hard or harder uh, to uh, face the challenges we have to. Kind of wondering, can you sleep at night? I sleep very well. I, I say that when your conscious is, is clear, it doesn't mean I don't feel concerned about so many problems that we still have to face. Of course. Um, because working in favor of uh, your nation from government, from private sector, uh, means that every day you need to solve a new uh, problem. Probably you are able to resolve one problem, but uh, a new one um, appears and then you have to respond to this problem. You always have new problems, new challenges to face. I know that m me, myself, and my team are doing the best, the best uh, to, in your ability. Yes. Do you have time for fun? What do you do for fun? The only time I, I, I can take for personal, uh, for personal matters, uh, I dedicate it to my family, to my husband, to uh, uh, my son. Uh, we try to spend, you know, the uh, time with the family. Uh, yes, yes, uh, together in our house. Um, but uh, if you are asking me about taking vacations and so on, it, it's very hard. I, I think I will need to wait for, for two more years. Did you work out? I try to take a, at least two or three days during the week uh, to walk a little bit, but that's all. Can you define yourself in five words? It's very hard to define yourself in five words, but I will say that um, I, I have tend to be a, a person uh, who likes to listen to, uh, to the people. And uh, I know that we are, we presidents are human beings. We are not perfect. We, um, we um, try to solve the problems, but in the process we also uh, make some mistakes. Uh, but what is important is to listen to the people and try to correct the way you sometimes uh, take the decisions. And we, we, we try to learn every day. And now I know that I might be putting you in the spot, but hey, I have to ask you, who's going to win the election coming up in November? I can see that uh, the difference is, is, is very close. Right. Um, and probably what concerns me more is that uh, now in the United States, what you can see is a society um, quite divided into blocks. That's correct. And uh, quite radicalized about certain issues. Uh, and that is not good for a democracy uh, as, as an exemplary as the uh, United States democracy. So, so I hope that uh, despite who is going to win, uh, the American people can really reunite around the most important values that have characterized that society. Thank you to our president, Laura Chinchilla. It was quite an honor to have you Thank here. Thank you very much. Let me tell you also that here in Costa Rica, we, the presidents, are very accessible to the people. Probably some people uh, feel very surprised, but we try to, to be very close to the people and uh, uh, we don't move with these uh, many security personnel. We, we try to be very accessible. That was the president, Costa Rican president, Laura Chinchilla. I want to say thank you to Fabian Salas Bosa. He was a cameraographer. He was so good with that camera work. I was checking you out. I want to say thank you, Fabian, and Costa Rica, and my father, Esteban Gil Giron. Gil Giron, that's how we say it. Forget about the G. Gil Giron. I want to send my regards to Costa Rica. It's a very special country. It's where I come from. Now we have Mildred Espinosa, an award-winning journalist with us. Thank you for coming very much. I was seeing the work on the internet. I was checking, doing my homework last night, the whole last week, and I said, this woman is remarkable. Thank you, Susan. You've done so much work. Uh, that where yes. do we start? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just... Yes, no, thank you very much for the invitation. It's an honor for me to be here in your show. Congratulations to you for having the, the uh, president, the first female president of Costa Rica. That's correct, yes. And so congratulations. Uh, I definitely think that's a great, you know, certainly it's, it's a great indicator of women empowerment uh, as something that we discussed earlier before the show. Right. She's, uh, you know, she's been challenged. You know, it, it's like the situation in the world is not easy. 
no matter where you go, you can be here, you can be in Central America, Japan, Costa Rica. We are facing a lot of obstacles, are it's we? A tough, it's a tough time. It's a tough, it's a tough, time. tough time. We have a global economic crisis. That's correct. Um, we have uh, elections in the U.S. Uh -huh. And as you know, whenever there's a cold in the U.S., there's a flu in the other countries uh, because unfortunately of where we are and at our location. Um, however, there are also good things to talk about. They, while these countries do face challenges, they also have progress. Uh, Costa Rica certainly is one of those countries that I've had the opportunity as a journalist to conduct several interviews um, in the past with ministers of different parts of the region of Central America. And Costa Rica has been a, a, a leading country when it comes to technology, for example. Uh, tourism. Right. It's a country that has really uh, beautiful done a places great job. to go. It's not that I want selling it, but you have to say. I mean, we have beautiful places to go to. And, and but you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I right. am actually, uh, I think, your non-conventional journalist. Um, <laughs> and the reason I say that is because I believe in tourism and I believe in promoting our countries. Um, I was born in Guatemala, raised in New York, and I've been a journalist for 15 years. And um, one of the things that I have done as a journalist is uh, produce documentaries documentaries highlighting positive and highlighting promoting our countries the beauty the culture heritage that we have rich Central American countries right. um, and with that everywhere in the world there are good things about different countries and I think that if we're able to focus a little bit more on what these countries are doing to progress right. it would also give the opportunity for these countries to grow because when we talk about the negative aspects of countries we don't allow them for growth and right now in a time where we're facing global economic crisis everywhere um, we need jobs right. and job creation developed from sustainable tourism. Right. And, you know, she mentioned sustainable development. It's a key it's factor. a key factor that really plays a major role. Uh, tourism is one of the largest contributors to the economy mm -hmm. uh, all over the world. That's correct. Um, and so tourism really needs to be something that's embraced. Good. And so I am one of the journalists who's had the opportunity to embrace it. Um, I do it with Guatemala. Um, I was uh, earlier this year appointed ambassador of tourism for Guatemala. And, um, and I, I want people to know that Guatemala is beyond uh, its issues of, of security, of, right. of um, education so much challenges. More. It's just so much it's more so beyond much that. more. Because we, we see what's going on. It doesn't take a Harvard degree to figure that out. We see what's going on in the news. And everything is bad. It's like I go flip channel after channel after channel. And I like to see what's going on. I like to do my homework as a woman, as a citizen. I, I, and I said, oh my God, everything is so bad. It's like, I want to hear good, positive things. Right. But, you know, you got to sell and you got ratings and you got people putting pressure on your head. I Absolutely. can't imagine what it's like to be a president. I can't imagine what it's like to be under that kind of pressure. Right. What do you do? I mean, you got to do your job, but you got pressure and you have people saying, okay, you got to go this way. You gotta go that way. So where do you go? I guess finding that balance is quite a challenge for any president anywhere. It's quite difficult. It's, but as, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, you know. And it's like I, I was, you know, because she's very. She came to me very sweet, very accessible. She was very accessible, but you know, it makes you kind of wonder. Oh my God, how, how do you do it? Do you sleep at night? I mean, like really, how do you do it? And it's just. Uh, I guess we just do what we do. Yes. As she said, way. she's a human being. She's a human being. We're not perfect. Right. Like people and, um, and, and there are going to be issues. Um, the region, you know, Central America does face its, its own issues. However, I do have to say that in the bigger scheme of things, Latin America is doing much better than during the recession in the U.S. I know, because uh, China. Absolutely. China is providing. So, yeah, yes. it's like uh, we have right. growth. Right, despite Almost the recession. Almost five percent in Costa Rica, four point eight nine percent growth, right. which is very interesting. And it's been, it really is a great, uh, you know, to that respect, I, I think that it's a great thing for for Latin America. Um, earlier this year, there was a, a a conference that took place in Washington from mm -hmm. the Inter American uh, Dialogue Center that does research and analysis about the the region. And what they were talking about, what's Latin America, what's next for Latin America? 
despite the recession here, despite the economic crisis that we're facing globally, uh, Europe has many issues right now. Right. Latin America has been able to overcome those. And it actually, it's given Latin America the opportunity to take this negative and, to, and turn it into a positive. Right. Because it's become more independent. Mm -hmm. It's begun to look at to resources elsewhere besides the U.S.